Taught Pro. Uh, I have been absent for about a week, I guess uh, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, I was involved in a move. Um, we sold our house and uh, closing time came and we had to, you know, we had to take our stuff out of there and get ready to go to the next place. And uh, that took a, a lot more effort and time than uh, I expected it would. So I really didn't have the means even uh, to do a, a Basketball Talk Pro segment. Uh, but we're back and I apologize for the lighting a little bit. Uh, there might be some shadows. I hope it doesn't bother you uh, that much, but I'm in a new place and I don't have the normal lights that um, I use. Uh, and so I've had to kind of improvise uh, this morning and, and uh, hopefully it will not disturb you at all. Because what I want to talk to you about today is more important than lighting or what happened or why we're late or anything like that. Uh, I want to talk to you about defense. And uh, I want to start uh, by um, bringing to you what I think are three elements that are can be used in any defense. Doesn't make any difference what you plan. Uh, if you don't do these three things, I don't think you'll have a good defense. On the other hand, if you do these three simple things, I think you'll have a good defense regardless of what strategy or what form that you put it uh, into. I think that we as coaches have a tendency to complicate things uh, and keep things on a simple basis, uh, always adding something. We think we don't have enough, uh, but little a lot of times, in fact most of the time, is better than a lot. Uh, these are very simple things that you're going to, you're going to uh, listen to. But, in my opinion, and my experience tells me that these three things form the foundation of your defense regardless of what, you, what else you do. You must do these three things. And the number one thing is contain the ball. Now I'm talking about uh, containing penetration. Penetration, if you watch any games, any place, uh, whether it's high school, college, or professional right up to the NBA. Penetration creates tremendous problems for uh, your defense. Being able to contain that is exceptionally important. Uh, and I believe that players can do it if you work harder at it uh, with them. Uh, that we spend a lot of time on offense. Uh, if you watch player development guys in the NBA, that's all they work on. Shots, moves, uh, but never on guarding a man with the ball, which is the simplest and most effective way of having a good defense. Now, it's not only an individual, but it's a team also. And both have to be coordinated carefully. But the one element of this, of containing the ball, that I think is left out is the responsibility of the man who actually is guarding the ball. We tend to want to cover up for that man or, or lady uh, by tricky uh, things as a team. Um, but almost all those things weaken your defense. If a person can contain the man that they're guarding, uh, you don't need all those other things. And if you need all those other things, I'll guarantee you, you're going to weaken your defense. Remember this, penetration hurts you in three ways. Number one, and the most important, most points are scored is laps. Number two is free throws. People get following. You cannot win games following people. 
uh, and number three is the Passoff. So we don't want to spend so much team concern over stopping the drive or containing the penetration that we allow our open shots from other players. Uh, it goes back to one person containing the ball with some support from the team, but not giving up uh, those pass-offs or not getting, uh, giving uh, the ball up because of free throws. Uh, we're going to go into much more detail on all three of these things as we go along in Basketball Talk Pro. Today is just focusing on three things. That's number one. Number two is contest all shots. Every shot. Basically, if you can contest 70% or more of your opponent's shots, you will probably have uh, them in a position where they're not going to shoot a good percentage. Uh, contesting shots is ex ex you know, exceptionally uh, important. And that also uh, enters into the individual and the team. Uh, I think that as a coach you must design what you're doing uh, so that you're in a position to contest shots. You're going to play very aggressive away from the ball, then chances are you're not going to be in good position to contest shots if it isn't your man. Uh, you, it, 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 you have to be able to help by contesting somebody else's shots. If they, if they get away, uh, the offensive player gets up away where the, the defensive man can't get to them. That's what I mean by all shots. It's the one area, by the way, that probably I spend more time on technique than anything else. Uh, there is a technique to contesting shots uh, that I'm pretty rigid on. And uh, I think you should be too. Uh, I see so much sloppy contesting of shots, uh, poor timing, uh, poor uh, execution of it, uh, and a lot of times no effort on contesting a shot, zero. Uh, we go into that a lot more, and if you really want to get into it, take measuring basketball performance because in that course, we spend time uh, on these elements. That's number two. Number three is rebounding. I'm going to tell you make one statement that will tell you everything you need to know about rebounding. Everyone rebounds. Not just the big guys. Everyone rebounds. When you have five people rebounding on the defensive end, you have a very good chance of getting a high percentage of their misses. The higher percentage of misses make, allows you to get a higher percentage of fast breaks and transition shots, which a lot of times are much easier to get than what you get in uh, playing against a set uh, defense. Uh, so. Uh, it becomes very important. I think attitude and, and the psychological end of rebounding is more important than anything else. Whereas with contesting shots, I think the technique is important. In rebounding, I think the mind is much more important. You must instill in your players a, a hungry, aggressive need to, de uh, to rebound. It is not the part of the game that, you know, is in the limelight. Uh, and everyone going for the ball, everyone trying to rebound. You don't need to be the biggest guy on the team. The two people that uh, I recall that were very innovative in, uh, in their rebounding. One was Bill Russell, uh, very instinctive, 
you study films of him, which I've done a lot, uh, you'll see a guy that just always knows where the ball is coming off that rim. Uh, and he could get to it. Uh, the other one is Dennis Rodman. You know, Dennis Rodman really made a career out of rebounding. At one time, he was a very good defender, uh, and that was kept him, you know, in the NBA. Uh, but as he got older, uh, he turned to rebounding, and he made a real, uh, a real business of it. Uh, but most of that was simply uh, a desire to rebound. Uh, Bill Russell said, most of my rebounds come under the rim, not over the rim. In Rodman's case, a lot of his rebounds came when he picked the ball off the floor. Uh, but just because of his push and drive to get uh, to the ball. If you have players, if your five players out on the floor at the time have that kind of a hungry, almost desperate need to get the ball, uh, you will see good uh, rebounding. You will see good team uh, rebounding. The three things that I mentioned, and I'll just mention them again. One, contain the ball. Two, contest all shots. Three, rebound. Uh, defensively, of course. Um, I believe anybody can do those three things. Everybody on your team can do those three things if we work with them in a way that they understand the importance of it and they spend time uh, in practice uh, working uh, on it. Talking will not do this to get this done. Uh, it, it's so simple, you just have to tell them. And, but working on it, day after day, will get the job done. Forget to talk. Get out on the floor uh, and do it and you'll see you will have success. I think these three things can be the dominant part of any defense that you want to use. I don't care whether it's a zone, a man-to-man, -man, you're pressing. All those things are kind of like a mask to me. The real defense is played uh, in three areas. If you can do those, and you can, anybody can do them. No excuses. Don't tell me you don't have a big enough guy. Don't tell me they're not quick enough. They're not uh, strong enough. All those things are nice, but people without those qualities can also do the three things we're talking about. Well, that's it for today. We'll be a little bit more uh, cognizant of doing these on a regular basis now that we've settled down a little bit in our personal life. And we look forward to many sessions with you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.